So I can see them. I think I've seen a question similar to this before on the released test. Um, they ask you to find the focal width of the parabola. Okay. So let's compare this really quickly to our standard equation for a parabola. The standard equations always have the squared term isolated. Okay, so x is squared here, so it would be x minus h squared is equal to 4py minus k. Alright, that would be the standard form because the x is squared. So that means that negative 1 half needs to be on the other side. So how do we get it to the other side? Divide. Divide, or it's a fraction, so I prefer that we multiply, multiply by the reciprocal. So that would end up being what? Negative 2y is equal to x squared. <laughs> now, um, just for the sake of going over everything, the vertex of this parabola would be 0, 0. Because there's nothing being subtracted from the x, there's nothing being subtracted from the y. So the vertex of this would be 0, 0, just as a fun fact. Okay. Now, they asked us for the focal width, okay? The focal width is the absolute value of that constant in front of the y. So, the focal width of this parabola would be 2, okay? So, that means that the distance from the focus to the sides of the parabola is 2. So, this is a some of this is not a super wide parabola is what I'm trying to say, okay? Now, um, the focal length, the focal length is uh, P, okay? So, the number in front of the Y is negative 2. The number in front of the Y in the standard form is 4 times P, so what would P be? Divide by 4, so the focal length is negative one half and it's always positive as well because you can't have a negative length so anyways okay so that means that the vertex is very close to the focus the vertex is very close to the focus because that length is only one half all right so Let's look at the, the, the next two equations are parabolas. Now, I know that they are parabolas because only one of the variables is squared. Okay, in the first expression, only y is squared. In the second one, only x is squared. So, I know that these are parabolas. It's very easy to tell the difference between a parabola and any doubles because only one of your variables is going to be squared. We want to write this in standard form. We're going to have to complete the squared. So, uh, since the y is squared, we're going to keep that on the left side. We're going to keep the 2y on the left side. I'm going to leave a bit of space for completing the square, but i got to move everything else to the other side. So, I'm going to add 6x and subtract 13. Okay, because I'm trying to put this in its standard form. Now, I have to complete the square. So I mentioned this last week. You take the number in front of the linear term, just the y. You divide it by 2 and you square it. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. you got to keep this balance, so you got to add it to both sides. Then we factor. It's always going to be either plus or minus the number that you squared. So in this case, it's plus because the 2 was positive, 1. And then we get 6x minus 12 on the other side. And uh, we need to factor that right side as well. Because that is true standard form for a parabola. So from this, we can tell that its vertex is positive 2, negative 1. Okay, the x comes first, positive 2, negative 1 is the vertex. Our focal width is 6, because that's the number in front. The focal length, we divide it by 4, 
and six over four reduces to three over two. Question. Okay, so from the standard form, you can tell all those characteristics. Okay, let's do one with an X. So, uh, the X is squared, so we keep that on the left side, leave ourselves a little bit of room, move the other stuff to the other side, so it becomes positive 6Y and negative 10. Now, we don't like to complete the square when there's a coefficient other than 1. We will look at an example like that tomorrow, but um, we don't want that right now. So that's an easy fix. All we have to do is divide everything by 3. Divide everything by 3. Not just what you want to. Everything. And just leave that as 10 thirds there on the end. That's okay if it's a fraction. Okay, let's complete the square. Okay, same thing as before. We're adding 1 to both sides, but this time it was minus 2, so that's going to factor into x minus 1 squared. And negative 10 thirds plus 1, 1 is 3 thirds, so negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7 thirds. And we need to factor that right side too. So x minus 1 squared, we need to take the 2 out. If we take out a 2, remember factoring out a GCF is like dividing. So dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half, so that's going to give us 7 over 6. Okay, it's going to give us 7 over 6. So our vertex is 1 7 6, both of those are positive because they both have minus signs. Our uh, width is 2. Our length, factoring a GCF like dividing, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. Uh, the perfect length would be 1 half. We divide the width by 4 every single time. Not too bad when we get into it, right? Maybe? Kind of? Still confused. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can you be a little more dramatic? <laughs> <laughs> it's not okay, sorry. Can we stop before he throws it up? No, he's not. No. Okay, let's look at example two really quick, okay, so we have less to do tomorrow. Um, write the equation in standard form and determine the type of conic section it represents. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you should be able to tell from the beginning uh, what it is, okay? Now, this could be a circle, or what could it also be? Parabola. No, parabola only has one of them still. An ellipse, okay? Not a hyperbola. Now, the reason why I know that is because right now, x squared and y squared are on the same side, and they're both positive. That's an ellipse. Look at the next one. x squared and y squared are on the same side. One of them's minus. That's a hyperbola, okay? That's a hyperbola. Um, so, this is either an ellipse or a circle. We are going to have to complete the square to find out which one. All right, here we go. We need to pair our x's together. We need to pair our y's together. And we need to move that constant to the other side. All right, now the reason why I didn't leave any space this time is because my x and y have constants in front. So what I have to do is I have to start by factoring out that 9. Now I'm going to leave my space. And i got to factor out the 4. And then I'm going to leave the space. Okay, so uh, 2 divided by 2 is 1, squared is 1. 
but that one is inside those parentheses with a nine in front of it. So I don't add one to the other side, I add nine to the other side. Same thing with the y's. Two divided by two is one, squared is one, but there's a four in front, so I have to add four to both sides. Because if I'm keeping the equation balanced, that one is inside the parentheses. So really, it's, it's getting multiplied by four on that left side. So I got to multiply it by four when I put it on the other side. Alrighty, so I can factor, and this is where we're going to end after we're going to be able to get this one done. 23 plus 9 is 32 plus 4 is 36. Now, if this were a circle, then the 9 and 4 would be the same number. Okay, the 9 and 4 would be the same number. Because they're not the same number, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by the 36, and I get 9 over 36 is 4, so this is x minus 1 squared over 4, plus y plus 1 squared over 9 is equal to 1. So this is an ellipse where it is taller than it is wide because the y is over the bigger number. Okay, this is taller than it is wide. Um, and it is centered at... 1, negative 1. Okay? So we're going to work on this completing square. We have several more examples to do with completing the square.